Hey friends, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to walk you through a very simple lit code solution to a very popular question called two sum. So uh, just to provide some context, I'm currently uh, doing a Udemy course on master decoding interview big tech fan questions. And every time I manage to uh, complete a, uh, a section, I like to just walk through the solution so that you know I'm learning twice by teaching it. <laughs> so I, I also think that you appreciate um, uh, to get a swift rendition of the solution because I noticed that most of the time the solutions provided are in, uh, in Python or in uh, Java and you know you don't really have like a Python to Java converter to Swift kind of uh, app, all right? So uh, this could really be helpful. All right, so let's get started. So the question says, given an array of integers, return the indices of the two numbers that add up to a given target. All right, so as you can see over here, I have an array of integer, one, three, seven, nine, and two. Okay, let me put it over here instead. Okay, so uh, the, X, the target is 11. If the target is 11, then the expected output would be 3 and 4. So as you can see, this is the uh, Xcode playground. And I've already uh, have my solution over here already. I have the brute force solution as well as, as, well as the optimized solution. And I want to walk you through how I um, uh, uh, approach this, uh, uh, this problem, okay? So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just comment out this, uh, these functions that I've written and then I'm going to just write them out from scratch as well. At the same time, I'm going to use this as reference, okay? So let me just comment this uh, one now. And as you can see over here, uh, let me just uh, set this up first. So I import XC test case <clears throat> and this class itself is, it conforms to the XC test case. And what this allows me to do is that, you know, I can write assertion methods over here. Okay, so let me show you an example. So if, if I uncomment this and over here, when I hit the play button, so I have to write this uh, statement over here. Notice that I'm able to uh, just let this run for a little while. Um, I'm able to, Xcode is able to uh, tell me whether uh, the test passes or fails. So I thought this was a pretty neat feature. Okay, so now let's uh, comment this out and let's think about how we can approach this and what the question is really asking. So given an input array, let's find two elements inside it over here. When added up, gives us 11. And then we want to return what those index or indices are, okay? So over here, the expected output is three and four. And why is that? Because if you see zero, one, two, three, all right, so index three is element nine, and index four is element two. So nine plus two equals to 11, which is the target, and therefore we return three and four. All right, I hope that this is uh, straightforward. Okay, so the way I'm going to, the way, the simple way to think about this is that we are going to run through all the numbers. So the, the, the way to think about this is, let's set the first pointer to be uh, one over here. And then we're going to loop through the rest of the other elements to the right of one. So we're going to do one plus three, is it 11? No, it's not. Okay, then let's try one plus seven. Is it 11? No, it's not. One plus nine, is it 11? No. One plus two, is it 11? No. Okay, if we fail to find any of these elements to the right of one that uh, equals to 11, then we're going to shift the first pointer to the second one, which is three. Okay, so we're going to check three plus seven, is it 11? No. Three plus nine, is it 11? No. Three plus two, is it 11? No. Okay, then let's go to seven. 7 plus 9 is 11, so I hope you, you get the point, okay? So let's first write our first uh, solution, okay? So I'm going to do fun test brute force. So that's uh, the name of the uh, function because this is uh, the straightforward way of uh, trying to find a solution. Uh, and it's, uh, it's not the most optimal solution, okay? But it's still a solution that works, okay? So I have to loop through this uh, input and then I need to also loop through the elements to the right of the index of the first pointer. Okay, so that means that I'm going to have um, a loop inside a loop. So let's do a var result uh, of type int. So I have to assert xct assert equals to result is equals to this expected output. So obviously this is going to fail. Let's just run this and let's see Xcode responding. Okay, so. Uh, executed one test with one failure. Uh, XCT, uh, sorry, empty array is not equal to three and four. Okay, so this is the expected 
uh, result because we have not added the implementation, right? So let's get started. So I'm going to loop through this input. So for i in 0, input.count, all right? Let's create the first pointer. Let p1 equals to input i. All right, so up to now, I, I hope it's still quite straightforward. And then now I have to find a way where I can loop through the elements to the right of p1. So how can I do that? I'm going to do for j in 0, input.count. All right, so is this correct? This is obviously not correct because if I'm doing it this way, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be looping through all the elements inside input, which is not what I want. I only want to, imp I only want to loop through the elements on the right of whatever p1 is, all right? So if p1 is three, then I only want to look through seven, nine, two. And therefore, this part has to be dynamic over here, okay? So I will have to subtract, okay? i plus one, <clears throat> okay? Why is it i plus one? Because i at the start is going to be zero. So if input.count minus zero is equals to input.count, which is obviously incorrect, okay? So I have to add one over here. Okay, so let me see. Um, okay, so I'm going to uh, now find what P2 is. So P2 will be input, sorry, P2 will be I plus J plus one. Okay, so at the start, um, I is going to be zero, J is going to be zero. So obviously zero plus zero is zero. So if we don't add this increment over here, then P2 is going to be the same as P1, which is incorrect. All right, so I'm going to check if P1 equals to, uh, sorry, if P1 plus P2 equals to target, then result equals to I and this one over here. All right, so I hope that this is uh, simple enough to understand. So let me just remove all those lines over here and let's run this thing. Okay, so let's come to the bottom and just hit the play button and let's see if the assertion passes. Oh, what's the problem here? Um, oh, let's see. Um, P2, oh, sorry guys, input. <laughs> let's try that one more time, okay? Okay, so I executed one test with zero failures, so that is good. So is this the most optimal solution? Definitely not because we have a loop inside a loop which gives us the uh, time complexity of O to, uh, let me just do it over here, O to N square. Okay, so that is not good. <laughs> okay, we can do better. Okay, so let me just get rid of this. And then now let's create another uh, solution over here. So I'm gonna call this test optimal, optimized. Okay, let's, talk. let's call this optimized. Okay, so maybe before proceeding with the rest of this video, maybe you could think about how would you what are the other ways you can think of to write this in a more efficient way? All right, so uh, pause the video and think about it for at least a minute before you, um, before you continue uh, resuming this video and see if your solution is similar to mine. All right, I hope you have done it. So let's uh, get started now. Okay, so the way uh, we're gonna do this is that we're gonna use another data structure called a dictionary. And why do we want to use a dictionary? Because we know that when we do any lookup from a dictionary, the time complexity is O of one, all right? So uh, we just need to uh, get uh, the, um, the key, we'll, we'll immediately get the value. So the time complexity for that is O to one. So what, what we're going to do is that, um, I'm going to check again, I'm going to look through all the, uh, the elements inside the array. And then I want to check against the dictionary to see if I have the other uh, number that exists inside the dictionary. All right, so maybe let me just type this out again. Um, so var dictionary, this will be an int to int. So this is going to be an empty dictionary now. So what is the key and what is the value over here? So this key over here will be the other element which adds up to the first pointer would give you the target 11. Okay, and the, uh, the value over here will be the index. Okay, so uh, let me just introduce you this concept of number to find. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, write this down over here first. So var result, okay, 
guys, let me just do it over here. So for i in 0 to um, input dot count, okay, and I know I'm not explaining it the best, but I promise you that uh, you'll find out, you, you, you'll learn about this uh, just very quickly. Okay, again, we're going to do let p1 equals to input dot i, okay, and then we want to check what is the number to find. Okay, or let's call this MTF, number to find. The number to find will be the target minus P1. All right, so for example, um, if we are on the first, if P1 is one over here, what is the number to find? The number to find is 11 minus one, which is 10. So we want to look through, we want to look into the dictionary to see, is there a key which is 10? Okay, if we can't find that, then we'll add that into the dictionary. Okay, then we'll move to the next element over here, three. So now P1 is three. What is the number to find? 11 minus three, which is eight. So we look into the dictionary to see, is there a key that has eight? If there is, give me the index of where it is. Okay, I hope this is making sense. Okay, so, so number to find equals to target minus P1. And then, um, okay, over here. So if let index, which means I'm looking into the dictionary. Let's see if I have a number to find. If there is, uh, that means uh, I found the, the matching pairs. Then I'll do result equals to um, i and um, index. Okay, let me see if this is correct. Yeah, index. Okay, otherwise, I'm going to uh, put this um, p1 into the dictionary. Okay, okay. There's no result over here, so let me just do um, var result. Uh, will be this. Okay, and then over here, I'm going to do an assertion over here. Xct assert equals to result is expected output. Okay, I hope you guys are following. And then otherwise, I'm going to do um, result sorry, dictionary, I'm going to put in the number to find as, um, oh, sorry, I'm going to put in P1 because P1 could be the number to find for other elements as well, equals to I, okay? So I is the index, okay? So what I'm going to do over here is, uh, let's see, okay, yeah, this is fine. So let's run this now and let's see if this is working, okay? Okay, so this is very interesting over here. So actually the solution is kind of correct, but the test still fails. Why is that? It's because it says that uh, XAT assert fail for three is not equal to three and four, all right? So because the, uh, the, the elements are not in the right, so to speak, order, and that's why it failed. So what we can do is that we can utilize something called a set, and then we can see, uh, if you can read out more about sets, um, you can actually compare uh, let, let me just show it to you. Compare sets uh, Swift. Okay, so let me just bring this uh, over to you. Let's see if we have that over here. Um, maybe it's here. Let's see. Okay, we, we, I, I kind of know, I, I forgot where the article was, but basically we can compare that as long as the elements are the same, even though they are in different orders, we can still assert them to be equal. So that is one of the usage of sets, okay? So instead of returning a, uh, an integer um, array, this time I'm going to do a set of integer instead. Okay, so this time I think this, uh, what else? I can do, so this, now, now, this res, uh, now this expected output is an integer array. So what I can do is that I can just convert this into a set instead. Okay, so let's hit the play button and let's see if this is working. <clears throat> All right, so guys, this is the um, this is the second optimized solution over here, and for the uh, space complexity, this will be sorry the time complexity. It will be O of n. Uh, because we'll be looping, we'll still have to look through all the different elements within this array inside over here. And because um, O of 1 is so much less significant, uh, we are going to take the higher, uh, the less efficient um, uh, uh, time complexity, which is, uh, sorry, which is O of n over here. All right. Okay, guys, I hope that uh, this video was helpful. I'm not really the best person to teach about algo and data structure, as you can tell, but uh, I'm trying and I hope that this has been helpful for you. 
So um, if you think that this is uh, something that you wish to see more of, feel free to leave down the comments uh, because I will be <laughs> going through all these uh, questions over here and uh, I think um, just by, oops, is it, do I have it here? I'll be going through all these questions over here. Um, and as you can see, these are pretty, these questions are, you know, pretty um, varied and they have different difficulty as well. And um, I think uh, you might really appreciate the swift rendition of it. All right, so let me know guys. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.